God just manifested himself in that meeting. It was down in Tallahassee, Florida, and it was just an extremely powerful, powerful moment. Now, this is a broadcast that if you have a VCR, you want to tape it and keep this tape so that you can share it with people in your family and friends that you know that are unsaved, loved ones that don't know the Lord, because it's especially anointed to help people accept and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and also to help them receive their healing and deliverance from, from problem situations and, and things like drugs and alcohol and things like that. So set up the VCR and tape that so you'll have it to use over and over and over again. And it'll just keep, keep producing in your life and in the lives of others. Besides that, you're just going to enjoy it. Amen. Expect to receive. Expect to receive glorious and mighty blessing from God as Brother Milan Lefebvre shares from the depths of his heart. You know, Milan had really bad heart trouble. The doctors told him if he didn't get off the road, it's going to kill him. And um, how, how many years had you been on the road in, in ministering to, in music at that time? What? 15 years? I've been on the road 33 years, but I, I really gave my that. life to Jesus in 1980. That, that, that dog race you was in back well, there. Before you. <laughs> I've been on the road that long too, but Jesus hasn't been part of it. Amen. <laughs> 1980, I gave my okay. life to Christ in 1980. And uh, just, I mean, from 1980 up to 1990, 10, 91, 92, 10, 12, 13 years, literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of young people came to know the Lord through this man's ministry Praise and through God. his music. Thank well, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Amen. Amen. that young man that you met last night and yesterday afternoon, Mark Bishop, pastors in Panama City, and, and uh, Mark and Scarlett, as I said earlier, are very close to us, and that we call them our children in the, in the Lord. And uh, I had preached there at Mark's church, and we took a few days off, and, and Panama City, you know, got a pretty nice beach down there. And, and so uh, we decided that it was time to do some serious laying around. You know what I mean? Man? I mean, do nothing and do it real slow, man, you know? And so that's what we were doing. And and Gloria came over and she said, hey, and back there then, man, Milan had hair down to about here. I mean, that might have been something wrong with your heart, you know? It might have been, no. <laughs> Gloria and I, we just laying around out there by the pool, you know, and just doing, like I said, doing really nothing, nothing, nothing. She came over there and she said, uh, you, you see that long-haired guy over? I said, yeah. She said, uh, he walked by me a while ago and said he's reading T.L. Osborne's book on healing the sick. And she said, the, it just came all over me that maybe you and I need to lay hands on him. Well, I just glanced over there, there at him. By reputation, I knew mine on Lefebvre, but I didn't know him. I mean, I'd never met him, never been within five miles of him where I could see him up close, you know. And I didn't recognize who he was. And, she, and then he and Ann were gone. I said, well, I'll tell you what, let's pray. She said, let's agree that if that, if that was the Lord, that we will get another opportunity. I, she said, I, I, I should have done, said something, done something, but I didn't. So uh, that evening, Mark said, uh, did you all know uh, Milan and Lefebvre were here? And we said, no, we didn't know that. And they said, yeah. Uh, and said, he, I, I think you guys need to get together. You need to talk to them. They need to talk to you. So we said, okay. And when we saw him, Gloria said, that's that long-haired guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that guy I was supposed to have, have, have prayed with. See, come to find out the devil had attacked his heart. And like I said, the doctors told him, if he didn't get off the road, he's going to die. Well, he'd already made up his mind. There wasn't no way he's going to quit the ministry. So, Amen. you know, and so something had to happen. 
And he began to read books on healing and deliverance and so forth. And that night, we were leaving the next morning, so the four of us set up that night in our room, and we talked the Word of God until after 2 o'clock in the morning. And Gloria and I still had to pack before we could leave the next day. But we talked and prayed and talked and prayed and cried and prayed and talked and prayed until after 2 o'clock in the morning. And now, to make a long story short, the man's got a brand new heart. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. The Word Amen. of God. Now, let me add, let me add something, God. let me add something to that because I don't want, I don't want you to get, uh, I don't want you to get a, a false impression here. That night, he and Ann became determined that the Word of God was priority in their life and, and became determined to totally immerse themselves in it. And they started listening to tapes on faith and healing and deliverance and the Word and just night and day. You know, I'm not just talking about just four or five minutes here and there and the other and oh yes, amen, amen, you know. I'm talking about night and day and day and night. And it was the immersion in the water of God's Word that totally and completely restored his heart and restored his health to him. Praise the Lord. Can I share something? Sure you can. That's what I was fixing to say. Why don't you share something about that? <laughs> I don't know. You know, we had, my wife and I had been fasting and praying. We weren't sure what to do. We had been told by some religious folks uh, that we were putting God to a foolish test to continue to minister after the doctors told us you're going to die if you don't get off the road. And according to their CAT scan and their blood test and all the, and, and especially according to the pain in my chest, the doctors were right. But according to the Word of God, by His stripes you're healed. God said, I sent my Word and healed them. God said, my Word is life to those that find it and health to all their flesh. And I knew that God doesn't kill his kids for trying to obey him. God's good, and he's good all the time. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and yet, in my uh, spiritual immaturity or in my lack of experience and knowledge, you know, there's nothing wrong with being in spiritual kindergarten as long as you don't stay there 20 years. Amen? And you got to start somewhere. Well... You know, I was in ministry. Like you said, I'd seen 180,000 kids come to Christ at that point. I was an ordained minister, full of the Holy Spirit. And yet there was something I didn't understand because the Word of God says if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Well, if you're about to die with a bad heart, you're not free. And I was going to everybody, and I came to y'all. I'd been, my wife and I had been praying, and we were saying, God, now you got to show us, because I didn't understand exactly. He hadn't shared this word with me yet. He and Gloria hadn't uh, uh, taken me to some places. That three or four hours that night, you took me all over the New Testament, basically. I mean, we got in the word. And uh, at the end of it, right before we prayed, he said, now, now look, if we, it says, wherever two are in agreement touching any one thing, God said, I'll do it. He said, now, in order for us to be in agreement, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. You know, the book of James says, is any among you sick? You should call for the elders. They'll anoint you with oil. They'll call upon the name of the Lord. If you sin, your sins will be forgiven. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. There's not any gray area there, people. There wasn't anything to discuss. There was no room for theological debate. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. So my brother said to me in a very gentle and kind way, are you going to pray the prayer of hope or the prayer of faith? Because I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. And if you're going to get in agreement with me now where we're touching this thing, God's ready to raise you up. And I don't know about you, but it's nice to pray for other people. And you can do that in hope. But if you're the one dying, you don't want to pray the prayer of hope. You want to get this issue settled, and not just to survive, but to have the abundant life in Christ. And my wife and I that morning were praying, and we said, God, evidently there's something in your word that we don't understand. And I remember saying this, or it might have been my wife praying, but that morning before we went out on the beach and before we went by, y'all, and Gloria saw us, I remember one of us saying to the Lord, and I was in agreement with it if it was her, 
God, if you've got to send an angel, send somebody into our lives to reveal this part of your personality and character that we may understand your word and walk in it because we know you're good and we know the enemy comes to try to steal and kill and destroy. God's the giver of life. God's not a taker. He's a giver. And the enemy's a taker and he's coming. He's trying to take my life before I can accomplish your perfect will for me. And so I thought it was pretty cool the way God decided to send along what I consider to be a couple of angels in my case and explain to me and take me to that place in the Word. And right before we prayed, the last thing you said was, you took me over to Mark 11 where it says, when you pray and you took the time to say, now look, Mylon, this doesn't mean when the doctors agree, when the blood test and the CAT scans agree, when the pain's out of your chest, the Son of God, it was written in red in my Bible. It was the, the, the great physician saying, here's how this thing works, people. When you pray, believe that you receive, and it'll be done for you. And boy, the Spirit of God opened that thing up to me, and I got a hold of it that night, and I praise God for you and him both, because that word, and, and let me say this to you, because I was watching, I was in the back room watching the TV this morning as Glory was praying over everybody at healing school. I wanted to get healed just like that. I want, and, and by the way, if you're sick enough, I was going to Methodists, Presbyterians, Baptists, Pentecostals, Lutherans, Catholics. I was letting everybody pray for me. I just wanted to live. And I kept expecting God to just open up the heavens and strike me with lightning and fix all my problems. In my case, God required me to believe him. Now, he, he, can, he can heal somebody instantaneously. He can heal a heathen if he wants to. He has mercy on whoever he wants to. But since he had revealed the word to me, he made me responsible for it. And I praise him for it because it's not just something I think or I've heard preached now. It's something I've experienced. And not only am I healed from that heart attack, but praise God, I won't have any more of those. I do have a new heart, and I will walk in divine health until God's ready to call me home. Amen? Yeah, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Man, that's exciting. Hallelujah. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Back uh, a number of years ago when he was just a teenage boy, he wrote a song called Without Him. Elvis Presley recorded it, and, and a number of things happened. This afternoon praying over this service and going over the lyrics of that song. It, the, the Spirit of God just, just opened up my, my heart to this and I saw it. It just, I'm not talking about a vision or anything, but it did, the song did strike me as a revelation and I saw what had happened to your life. And I believe that there is a revelation here. It really helped me. And I believe it'll help just a whole lot of you, particularly those of you that are musicians or involved in music at all. When God gives you a song like that or, or any kind of, uh, just a little phrase that you've been saying or just a little chorus that you sing or like to sing, don't just pass the thing off or try to get somebody recorded or something. That's God speaking to you. Amen. Amen. I saw your whole life today in that song. And God gave it to you when he's a young teenage boy. If you'd paid attention to him, you could have missed the first verse and a half of that song. Amen. See? Amen. He said, without him, uh, I can do nothing. Without him. I'd surely fail. Without him, I'd be drifting like a ship without a sail. And without him, and it goes all the way down through these different lyrics. After, a few years after that, Mylon walked away from uh, the ministry that his mother and father and them, the, the Lefebvre family, and the, they were singers and, and were on the road ministering and singing gospel music and all that. That whole song became prophetic in his life. He drifted like a ship without a sail. Second verse says, I would be enslaved, became a heroin addict. 
enslaved to uh, the world and sin and idolatry and, and all of that. And, just, and Satan thought he had him in so deep he couldn't get out. But then the next line says, yeah, but with Jesus, I'm saved. See? God's talking to us in these last days through our music, and we really need to listen. He and I are going to sing a song together for you. Praise the Lord. Lord God. <clears throat> Brother Copeland's asked me to just give everybody here an opportunity. If there's anybody here tonight that has not yet made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, and the Spirit of God is created this day, today is the day the Lord has made. And the Bible tells us that today is the day of salvation. You know, prophecy is being fulfilled very quickly, people. The Bible is like all the rest of the books on the earth. It has a beginning and it also has an end. And if you read the whole thing, it says nobody knows when Jesus is coming except the Father. But we do know when we see the season. We know when this word has been fulfilled. 
He said, in the last days, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be earthquake and famine and disease. He said, when you see these things happening, you'll know that my coming is at hand. Prophecy is being fulfilled very quickly. Again, no one knows when. But we do know this. This is no time to be playing church. If there's ever been a time on the planet Earth when people ought to be looking up because their redemption draweth nigh, these are last days. And there's a difference in knowing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believed that when I was a young man. My granddaddy was a preacher. My mom and daddy sung about Jesus, and I did too. It was a part of the tradition of being with ever. And when I was about 13 years old, I asked uh, a, a minister came to our church, an evangelist, a youth evangelist, and we had a revival at our church. And he told us the four spiritual laws, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And of course, I knew that I had sinned. And he gave us an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. And I did that. And I stood up in front of all my friends and I walked down that aisle and I knelt at that, at that altar. And I asked God to forgive me. And God forgave me. But it didn't change my life. Because just asking Jesus to be the Lord over your sins won't change your life. In order to have your life changed, you got to give him not just the stuff you don't want, not just the stuff you're ashamed of. If you want to see the power of God flow in your life, you got to give him your life. You don't just accept Jesus. As, Romans 10, 9, and 10 says this is how simple it is to be born again. He said, you must believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that God has raised him from the dead. And you also, he said, and if you believe, if you believe, that's covenant talk. It means where there's a covenant, there's two parts to it. God said, I'll do my part, but here's your part. You must believe, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that God's raised him from the dead. And if you will confess Jesus as your Lord. And see, Making him your personal Lord is different than recognizing the fact that he's the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Lord doesn't mean he is the Son of God. It means he's my master. Lord means he's my king. Lord means that I'm not negotiating with him anymore about what to do with the rest of my life, but that I'm looking in his word every day and saying, Yes, Lord. Jesus said, I am the way. I know the way to think and I know the way to speak. I know the way to act and I know the way to react toward my father and toward you and my family and my brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you want to do things my way, I just want to encourage you today, if there's anybody here that'll be honest with God and with yourself and say, I've been doing things my way and claiming it was the way. If anybody here is willing to humble themselves before God and say tonight, I don't want to go halfway with God and I don't want to follow him from afar off. I want to draw a line in the sands of time and I, from this day forward, I want to walk with God. I want to hear him. You talk about how Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland are up here and they're saying, I was talking to God today and God spoke this into my spirit. God's wanting to do that with you. He's wanting your spirit to become so sensitive to his that he can speak to you every day when you need to know whether you should buy that car or that house or go to that school or take that job. God wants to be able to speak it to you. He is speaking it to you if you're sensitive, you're hearing him. Is there anybody that wants to give him everything? If you do, I want you to stand up in front of all these people right now and come right down here. I want to pray with you to accept the lordship of the Son of God. Come on, brother. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? Come on. You're saying this is it. Today is the day. Don't worry about what your friends think. It don't matter. What Jesus thinks is what counts. He's going to do what you can't do if you'll do what you can and humble yourself right now and submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, the Spirit of God saying today's the day of salvation. Come on, we're going to wait on you. It's okay, come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Christians pray. Christians pray. Strongholds are coming down right now in the name of Jesus. 
People who have been under peer pressure and been concerned of what others think, that spirit of pride is being broken right I now in the name of Jesus. You. Hallelujah. Yeah. Satan, we bind you in Jesus' I'll name. I'll never turn you. Spirit of pride, we take authority over you. You have no place in our lives. Hallelujah, God. My precious Jesus. Fill them with your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we'll wait on you. There's a couple of you that are sitting there with your loved one. Listen, there's somebody here tonight that's been in ministry. There's somebody here tonight that's been in ministry for a long time. And I'm not saying you've backslid and rejected Christ and decided to intentionally leave him. But you've let your first love grow cold. It was accidentally, you got so busy trying to do the work of the kingdom that you got burnt out and lost your vision. God wants to refresh your vision tonight. And the anointing's here right now to do it. Come on. Don't worry about what your, those that you've been ministering to think. It's, it don't matter. Right now is a new beginning in Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Bless you, Lord. I want to know you to bless you, Lord. I'll never turn Holy God, you Holy God, away. Oh, Holy God, Jesus, my sweet Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Without you, Hallelujah. How lost I have been. Listen, if there's a marriage represented here tonight that the love has gone, I'm not saying that you're divorced or separated, even though that may be possibly the case. But if there's some, if you've been just putting up with each other instead of enjoying each other, that is not the perfect will of God. Just because you got the same house and the same kids and the same car, that's not holy matrimony. And God, want, God is in the restoration business. The purpose of the Spirit of God moving over this place right now is He wants to restore, reconcile us, first of all, unto Himself, and then unto each other and the body of Christ. And it begins in our homes. If there's marriages that need to be restored, if there's only one of you here, that's okay. God's not limited by time or space or location. Come on down here. We're going to pray. I want to Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord God. I'd never turn you away, oh, Jesus, my precious Jesus. Without him, my how lost I have been. Thank you, Lord. Listen to me now for just a second. There's not room down here to get everybody down here that God's dealing with us about. Some of you are here tonight and, and your kids are lost. And the word tells us if we raise them up, some of us didn't know how to raise them up in the way they should go and they've departed from it, from, from the way. I want to tell you that if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and God delivers you out of it and sets you on a high place, it says, he, he, you were quoting last night, he lifts us out of the pit of destruction. He crowns us with love and kindness. The glory of the Lord is upon us. We are the chosen people of God, and now we have chosen him. I want to set myself in agreement with you tonight, with Brother and Sister Copeland, that whatever your needs are, if it's in the Word of God and you have a right to claim it as yours, and you have a right to claim your children. You have a right to claim your marriages. It is it. God is not the enemy is a thief, and he's come to steal and kill from and destroy. And when we determine in our hearts that we're going all the way with God, let me tell you something. What, what you're going to learn here tonight and what you've been learning all week, here's, what, here's all we need to do about it. God is good, and he's doing everything he can it, to, to allow his power to flow into our lives, to, do, to accomplish that that we don't know how to accomplish. And all we have to do is what you've done tonight. You folks that are down here kneeling down, 
You've come down here and you've admitted, I don't have all the answers, but I trust you, God, because I believe you do. Now listen, here's what we need to do. Some of you have been miraculously touched already and are going to be before you leave out of here, and it's going to be real obvious to you like it was with me in Florida. It was real obvious to me. On the other hand, I went home believing that I was healed and had some people tell me, well, has the pain stopped in your chest? And I had to say to them, not yet. And they said, well, and I'm not, not everybody, but a few people said, well, then you're just naming it and claiming it, aren't you? I said, you know what? If you want to say that, maybe that's what I am doing. I saw it in the Word of God, and I'm His child, and I'm claiming this healing because it was for me. My Savior bought this for me and took my place and took my sicknesses and disease on Himself so that I didn't have to bear this. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but He delivers us out of them all. Now, I don't know what affliction means, trouble, trial, tribulation, whatever you're going through. If it's your kids, if it's your marriage, if it's making a living, whatever it is, I just want to simply say this to you. Whether you have an instantaneous change in your life or whether God requires you to walk out what, he's, what you've been learning this weekend, either way, it's good news. I want to encourage you to don't come in here and try to get enough of the Holy Ghost in three days to last you for three months and then get to the next Copeland Convention. Your spirit needs spiritual food, and that's what you're getting this week. And you, you can't store it up any more than you could eat enough food this week to last you to the next convention. Your spirit's going to get hungry next week. Now, what's, what, what we see working for this, brother, and I'm, I'm young at this too, what I see going on in Kenneth and Gloria's life when y'all aren't looking... What I see them walking out, and I see this word working in them. This is not a theology. This is not a religious thing. These people are walking above and beyond where most Christians get to. And it's because of their dedication to the word. They've seen it working, and they stay excited about it because it keeps working and keeps working and keeps working and keeps working. Amen. That, praise God. It's true. Now, we got to make up our mind. The devil's not going to get saved this weekend. Jesus is not going to change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Satan's not going to change. He's a thief and a liar, and he's going to be next week. The quality of your life is going to be raised according to the decisions you make. Brother Copeland taught me. He looked me right now one day. He was preaching to a whole bunch of people, but he just happened to look over where I was sitting and said these words. Our lives are governed by decisions. If you make holy decisions, then you have supernatural or holy government. You have the Holy One governing your life. If you make unholy decisions, then you have the same confusion that the world's in, even though you're a Christian. I just want to, I want to set myself in agreement with you, not just that your needs are going to be met, that you've been born again. You who are came down here tonight to accept Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. He's never rejected anybody, and he don't play church. People do, but Jesus don't. And if you came down here and asked him to save you and forgive you of your sins, I want to tell you in the name of Jesus, you are not guilty. Amen. Praise God. The blood of the Lamb has been applied to your life, and you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, let's pray. As the Holy Spirit leads me in prayer, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to go slow. I want you to think about what you're saying. What we're going to speak is the truth according to God's Word. You ready to pray? You don't have to close your eyes. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. God doesn't leave when we say amen. Every time you speak, you're praying. Do you know that? God's listening every time. Be careful what you say. Look up here at me now. We're going to talk to God. He's listening. He's right here. Wherever two or more gather in his name, he said, I'll be there. The living God is right here in this room right now, and he's listening. You ready? We're going to pray. Father God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, and I come to you tonight, Father, in the mighty 
and holy name of Jesus. I make Jesus Christ my Lord. Tonight, I make him not just my Savior, but my King. I recognize his Lordship. And I profess him as my Master. And I trust him with my life. Tonight, Father God, I give you my hopes and my dreams. Not just my failures and my weaknesses. Tonight, Lord God, I commit my relationships to you. My family, the people I work with, the people I come in contact with every day. And Father God, I will not be ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto my salvation. Well, praise God. He's done a miracle in your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now you walk out what you're learning this week. You walk out. What you've done is made a decision. The Bible tells us that we have been given a portion of the mind of Christ. Every one of you who has the living, who's accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and made him master of your life, the Bible says you have been given a portion of the mind of Christ. Now listen, this is very important, especially you who are new in Christ. When Jesus saves us, we become a new creature. You know what becomes a new creature? Your spirit. See, God is spirit and so are you. You're going to get a new body, but right now your spirit's living in that body. Your spirit's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, cleansed white as snow. You are perfect and pure before the living God. Here's the only problem. Your spirit still lives in your old body, and your old body still got your old brain. Now, being born again only takes an instant. But having my mind renewed, Jesus said, if you continue in my word. You know that scripture we've been quoting all weekend? Here's the beginning of it. If, there's that covenant word. Because you don't have to do it, and a lot of Christians don't. They go to church and hang out on the steeple and expect God to do everything for them. And he'll do his part, but he wants us, and he, he commands us to do ours. And here's our part, to seek the Lord your God, with, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and let him add these things unto you that we've been spending all our time trying to add unto ourselves. And we'll have the time to come to things like this. And by the way, we'll have the finances too. Amen. The renewing of the mind. See, he said we can either be transformed. I was a rock and roll musician. I, I can't tell you, by the way, Elvis recorded without him, and that was nice, and it made me some money, but what an honor for you to record it, my brother. <laughs> Praise God. And for to, to give me the privilege of getting to sing it with you. Praise God. But here's the, the thing is, we can either be conformed to the world like I used to be, or we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Transformed means changed. And if we want to walk with God, we already know how, what we got. We already know what we've been living. We don't want that this year, do we? A great, a great man once said, insanity is doing the same thing this year you did last year and expecting different results. <laughs> Amen? Now listen, if you want this holy, abundant life in Christ, here's what it comes down to. He told me, he said, look, I believe God's healed you and I believe he's going to uh, renew your marriage and get what the canker worm took away. I mean, Boy, when you're a heroin addict, you make a bunch of mistakes. And you mess things up and you lie and you, you have to reap what you sow, according to the people, if you're watching CNN. But God said, I will restore unto you what the devil took away from you, what to the, all the mistakes you made. Praise his holy name. Now, God's forgiven me, but if I want to, I can walk in that same junk. But praise God, I don't. 
And if I'm in the third grade this year spiritually or the fifth grade, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to the sixth this year. And if you and I will make up our mind, we're going to stay in that word. Thank God he, uh, he and Gloria started sending me tapes. And I mean, just as, as much as I was willing to devour, I mean, he was putting the word on me. And my wife and I listened to two or 300 tapes that first year. Well, it's amazing how I just don't want you to get as sick as I was. See, I was sick enough to where I was scared at first, and I thought, I'm going after God. Don't wait until you're sick. That's the worst time to learn. You can learn then, but you have to learn the hard way. While you well. While things are going good, now's the time to get your mind renewed so when the devil attacks, you can look him in the eye and let him know you were defeated at Calvary and I know the truth and you know I know the truth and I'm standing on the word, so go try that on somebody that don't know any better. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't move. Just stay right where you are. Okay? Later. Spirit of God, move, deliver your body, and cleanse your mind. Set you free. Faithful. Everything you said you'd do, you are faithful. I found that you are true. There's never been a time Your word has failed this child Listen now Our God is not a man That he should lie Lord, your faith Long-suffering and sure, my God is faithful. Your mercy will endure. Every time of need, I know you'll care for me. Oh, you're faithful to me. Thankful for your blessings every day. My Lord, I'm thankful. You've always found a way. You've been my dearest friend. You are my golden king. You're the way, the truth, the life. You're the best of me. I'm thankful for guidance and for peace. My Lord, I'm thankful for in you I am complete. You are my sole desire. Consume me with your fire. Lord, you're faithful. and longs for you're the lifter of my head my joy my pain you are my strength my power my sure foundation Lord you're everything I built my life upon Suffering and sure, my God, you're faithful. Your mercy will endure. Every time of need, I know you care for me. Oh, you're faithful. Oh, 
If you need healing, salvation, whatever it is, I want you to realize something. On the very same day that Jesus was offered up as a sacrifice for you and me, he took our place. God said, yes, I accept that as if Kenneth Copeland went to that cross and paid the price for his sin. Jesus stood in my place. He had the, the position with God where he could do that. I couldn't do it. I don't care how much I suffered. I could never, ever pay in, and atone in any way for my own sin. I, I wasn't qualified to do it. But Jesus was and, and did. Now, here's what I want you to get. That same day on that same cross, the same blood provided for your and my divine help from God. I mean, God wants you to be well just the same as he wants you to be saved from hell after you pass out of this physical body. If you need this today, we're going to pray together right now. I, I want to believe God with you. I, I'm telling you, I just believe God is, is all over you. He's all over me. This thing is real today. It's as real today as if we were standing at the foot of the cross and the blood of Jesus fell down and hit you right between the eyes. I mean, it is so real. It's eternal. It will never, ever grow old. The only thing keeping you out of divine health and divine eternity is the receiving of it. Jesus has done all of the rest. Now, I'm going to lead you in prayer. You pray after me. Pray out loud where you can hear it. Just having thought is not as strong as speaking words. You can't defeat thoughts with thoughts. You can't defeat the devil with just your thinking. You can't think as fast as he can. But he can't speak words like you can out your mouth. And that's where the power is, is when it comes out your mouth. Pray this out loud enough you can hear it with your own ears. Oh, God in heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make your home inside my spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, your holy self. Just baptize me, immerse me in your Holy Spirit. I repent of sin. I repent and renounce the past. And I step out of the past. And I step into my future with you. And I thank you. And I receive help for my body. I receive help for my financial affairs. I receive you as my Lord, my Savior, my provider, my everything. You're now my, my Father, and I just praise you and worship you and thank you for it. Now say this, and I mean you mean every word of it. Satan, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, I'm God's property. You take your hands off me. I'll follow Jesus all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to do two things. Number one, you call somebody right now. You talk to somebody and say, I just made Jesus the Lord of my life. If it's your mother that's been praying for you, call her and tell her. If it's your wife, call her in there and tell her. Tell your children. Tell somebody that you just made Jesus the Lord of your life. They'll be excited about it. 
Somebody might just get all upset about it. But thank God you'll either cause a revival or a riot. But you just don't just, just sit around about it. Second thing, I want you to sit down and I want you to write this ministry about it and let us know about it. Man, we want to shout with you. We want to praise God with you. And if you've accepted Jesus for the first time in your life, let us know that because we have some things that we'd like to send you free and, and that'll help you get started in your Christian life and so forth. And it just nothing in the world thrills us anymore. We'll be right back after these very important announcements. Praise the Lord. Now, Kenneth Copeland presents his landmark 20th album, fulfilling more than 25 years of music ministry with I Was On His Mind. When he was on the cross. Kenneth Copeland also seems faithful. And Mylon Lefebvre joins Kenneth, for without him. Please don't turn him away. Oh, Plus these other great songs from Kenneth Copeland. Now he loves to order I was on his mind use this special toll-free number Call 1-800-957-5522. Ask for offer number 1309. You may also order by writing to Kenneth Copeland, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. In Canada, Box 58248, Vancouver, B.C., V6P, 6K1. Operators are standing by now at our special toll-free number, 1-800-957-5522. Now, I want to remind you, you still have two weeks to believe God, get your stuff all together, get your family all together, and get to Fort Worth for the Southwest Believers Convention. Now, <clears throat> those of you in the Fort Worth, Dallas area, let me tell you something. Just about everywhere we go, I'll ask the whole congregation, how many of you are from the local area, and there be a little hand, a little dab here and there. I was how many of you over 50 miles away, and there'd be thousands and thousands of people that came into the meeting. That's wonderful. We encourage that. We want that. But God is going to hold you responsible for the meetings that he brought to your hometown that you didn't pay any attention to and wouldn't have anything to do with it. Jesus said in the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John that the word that he preached would be the judge that sat in judgment over you in the last day. And we have to answer for these meetings and so forth. Those of you in Fort Worth, Dallas area, let me tell you what you do. You get it together. Get your room right downtown there. You don't have to go stay at the house every night. There'd be 1,900 telephone calls between now and Saturday. The devil will see to that. Take a few days off and, and take your family. Go get your hotel room around someplace and get in there just like you were 500 miles away. We start on the 1st of August, that is on Monday morning, and we go all the way through Saturday night on the 6th of August at the Tarrant County Convention Center. We're expecting you to be there. God's going to be there. Glory's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Jesse Duplantis is going to be there. Jesse Bell's going to be there. There's no telling what all is going to happen in that place. The Holy Ghost is going to be there, and you're going to be there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Before we leave the air today, <clears throat> I want to uh, share this offer with you. This is the last record album that I've made so far. It's entitled, I Was On His Mind. Now, this is in, uh, of course, in compact disc or cassette. And this, this is, uh, well, let me tell you what I had in mind when, when I sang this and when we, it began to develop out of this project was an album that you could put on and listen to while you pray. You can listen to it and worship God while it's on there. 
it doesn't break tempo. It, and, and there's not anything wrong with that. Sometimes I like a nice, soft, and then, and then get over in something that just kicked the back out of your choir robe, you know. But this doesn't have anything on it like that. It, it stays in that same worship mode all the way through the album, and I believe that's the reason that the Spirit of the Lord had us to do it like that. The title of it was I Was On His Mind. It's uh, album offer number 1309-1309. The cassette is 998. The compact disc is 1298. If you'd like to have it, just write Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. Now, be sure and let us know whether you want the cassette or the CD. If you live outside the United States, of course, you use the ordering information on your screen right now. Be correct wherever you are, any place in the world. I'd really like to have you have this. I believe it'll bless your household. Now, next week on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, we're beginning a three-part series on the spectrum of reality. Now, this is one of those messages, teachings, and in, I mean, where you just dig around in in spiritual truth, stuff that just really, really stirs up your insides and you chew on it and chew on it. It's something you need to be listening to for the rest of your life here on the earth. So, I mean, tape it, uh, get hold of it, get the, get the, the uh, audio tape of it, whatever you have to do, because you don't want to miss any part of this, and it's something you want to study over and feed on in the spirit, and just feed your spirit on it, and it'll, it's, it's part of your spiritual development, so don't miss it. Join, it, uh, join us next week, because that's when we're going to start the first part of it. So until then, this is Kenneth Copeland reminding you that God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus is Lord. And him only when the sorrow make you so lonely all the days and the night closes here.